Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Israel, Mosai, and Christ Bless. My name is Captain Manathias. And I'm Officer Losais. All right, we're back with another 15 minutes with the captains. All right, today's topic is, my beloved is white and ruddy. This is mainly for you brothers who go to camp. If you ever uh, have to face this question, Lord's will, you get an understanding today. All right, start off with that. <clears throat> Song of Solomon 5 and 10. Read that. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10. Come on. My beloved is white and ruddy, mm -hmm. the chiefest among 10,000. The chiefest among 10,000. All right, so what we're going to do, we're just going to go through the precepts of what this scripture actually means. All right, start off with Matthew 17 and 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 17 and verse 1. Come on. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, uh -huh. his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. I want you to read all the way down to five. So, yeah, keep reading. Verse two. Uh huh. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. All right, so Christ was transfigured before them. Now, notice it says it caused his face to shine. Okay, it caused his face to shine. In uh, Wisdom of Solomon, it said that his beloved is white and ruddy. I want you to read on. And his raiment was white as the light. Come on. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, uh -huh. talking with him. Moses and Elias appeared. Come on. Then Peter answered and said unto Jesus, mm -hmm. Lord, it is good for us to be here. So they asked, is it good for us to be here? Read. If thou wilt, uh -huh. let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Come on. While he yet spake, behold. A bright cloud overshadowed them. All right, so a bright, bright cloud, a chariot overshadowed them. Come on. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said. Which said. This is my beloved son. This is my what? Beloved son. Uh-huh. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Right. So that's going into his beloved. His beloved had a bright uh, face as well. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Let's see where that brightness came from. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8 and verse 1. Come on. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Mm -hmm. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. That's what we just read about, was that Matthew 17 and 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, from there, give me um, Psalm chapter 51 and verse 7, going into his appearance, the whiteness that it's talking about. Okay, come on. The, the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Purge me with hyssop, uh -huh. and I shall be clean. It's going to that without sin, okay? His wisdom, he can't help but show, like it says in Ecclesiastes 8. Read that again. Read verse again. 7. Mm -hmm. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. It's going into being without sin, okay? From there, let's go to um, Ecclesiastes 9 and 8. Ecclesiastes 9 and 8. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 and verse 8. Come on. Let thy garments be always white. It says, let thy garments be always white, meaning what? Without sin. Read. And let thy head lack no ointment. Let thy head lack no ointment. Going into wisdom. All right, from there, let's go to Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10. So we're just giving you precepts going into what symbolizes that white. Okay, read that. 
the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 10. Come on. Many shall be purified. Many shall be what? Purified. Uh huh. And made white. And made what? White. That purification, once again, that's going into the Most High God, cleansing you of your sins. All right, read it again. Many shall be purified uh -huh. and made white. And made white. Drop that and give me revelations. Then we're going to touch on what it means, uh, what that ruddy means, okay? Uh, revelations 19 and uh, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 8. Come on. And to her was the granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, uh -huh. clean and white. Clean and white. Clean and white. So let's drop that. Let's drop that. All right, so now we're going to deal with ruddy, okay? Give me the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 7. And if you're on the streets, if you need a quick cutter, just use Lamentations 4 and 7. It deals with both of them. It deals with white and ruddy. Read this. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 7. Come on. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. Were purer than snow, all right? The Nazarites were purer than snow, okay? Uh, meaning what? They took the vow, okay? They were righteous, okay? Read on. They were whiter than milk. They were whiter than milk, meaning clean. They were uh, without sin. Come on. They were more ruddy in body. They than... were more ruddy in body, meaning what? They were of stature. All right, they were healthy. Come on. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Than rubies. Okay, that's a precious stone. So it said they were more ruddy in body than rubies. Let's drop that one. Give me First Samuel chapter 16 and verse 12. All right, so some more precepts going into that ruddy. What is that talking about? Come on. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance. Ruddy and with a beautiful countenance. That's going into um, your body's well taken care of. You're not skin and bones, okay? Mm -hmm. You um, have some health to you. Um, jump up to the next chapter. Give me verse 42. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 42. Come on. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, mm -hmm. he disdained him, for he was but a youth uh -huh. and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Ruddy and of a fair countenance. Um, watch this one. Give me the rest of Esther in the Apocrypha, chapter 15, verse 5. I like this one, all right, because when Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 10 is pulled, they like to say that the Savior is a white man, which is not the case. It's not the case. We already understand what white means, and they try to say that ruddy is going into red. No, it's not. It's not going into red. We just went through the precepts to show that. But I like this one for a particular reason. Watch this. The book of the rest of Esther, chapter 15 and verse 5. Come on. And she was ruddy through the perfection of her beauty. So it says that Queen Esther, she was ruddy because of the perfection of her beauty. Is that it on that? There's more. Read. And her countenance was cheerful. And her countenance was cheerful. Now, I want the book of um, Esther uh, in the Bible, but I want chapter 2 and verse 10. Watch this. <clears throat> Esther chapter 2 and verse 10. The book of Esther chapter 2 and verse 10. Come on. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. So when it says that Esther didn't show uh, her, her people or her kindred, meaning what? She didn't reveal what nationality she was from. So this shows you that Ruddy is not talking about a skin color because it shows that Queen Esther, which was an Israelite, mm -hmm. she could pass for any nationality. So she could pass for a so-called Israelite. She could pass for an Egyptian. Right. She could pass uh, for a Moabite. She could pass... For a uh, median, all of these different uh, nationalities, okay? So it's showing you it had nothing to do with skin color. Ruddy is going into your health and your structure and your countenance, all right? So we pray that you got a better understanding of Wisdom of Solomon. Excuse me, I said Wisdom of Solomon. Songs of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10, all right? right? And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day... Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. 
These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.